Hi, this is Dave Webb from allaboutforensicpsychology.com and this is the first in a series of mini lectures based on the material you'll find on the website. When my students arrive for their first lecture, I would always start by giving them a few minutes to write down an answer to the question, what is forensic psychology? Now, the reason I did this was because despite the fact every single undergraduate psychology student chose to do this course, not one of the students came to see me in advance to ask what the course was actually about. Now bear in mind students chose their courses well in advance of the start date and to make an informed choice they were always strongly advised to speak to the lecturer running the courses they were interested in. So why the no-show? Well basically they didn't feel they had to ask what is forensic psychology because they already had a preconceived idea of what it's all about. Now I mentioned at the start of the lecture I would always give students some time to write down an answer to the question what is forensic psychology what I didn't mention, however, is that after about two minutes, I would ask for their attention and apologise for forgetting to tell them that they weren't allowed to use the words serial killers, criminal profiling or silence of lambs in their answer. Now, it was usually at this point that most of the writing in the lecture theatre stopped. And if you're thinking, well, I would have stopped writing as well, please contain your disappointment and don't rush off just yet. Because the answer to the question, what is forensic psychology, may not be quite what you'd thought but that doesn't mean that the subject has to be any less engaging. Now the first thing to appreciate when addressing the question what is forensic psychology is that even psychologists in the field are divided as to what the answer is. The problem that you have is that people who can be said to operate under the umbrella of forensic psychology are drawn from a wide range of disciplines. So it's always been difficult to state what the boundaries are when you're addressing the question what is forensic psychology. So for instance you have psychologists in the prison and correctional services, clinical psychologists in special hospitals and psychiatric services, educational psychologists, occupational psychologists, academics and so on and so forth. Now, while it's important to acknowledge that this fragmentation of role exists, it's just as important to realise that these different groups are linked to forensic psychology because their work, their expert knowledge or research activity is somehow connected with the law. This legal connection makes perfect sense when you consider the word forensic comes from the Latin forensis, which literally means appertaining to the forum, specifically, in case you're interested, the Imperial Court of Rome. So in essence, the debate as to what is forensic psychology and what is not forensic psychology rests primarily on the nature of psychology's relationship within the legal system. Let me give you an example. Imagine two psychologists meet at a conference and they begin talking about the work they do. The first psychologist tells the second that she recently gave expert testimony in court arguing that the defendant in a murder case was criminally insane. The judge and the jury concurred and having been found guilty on the grounds of diminished responsibility the defendant was going to be sent to a secure psychiatric unit. Now there's a coincidence, the second psychologist says. I actually work in the unit where they're going to be sending this guy, so I'll be dealing and working with him when he arrives. So here you have a situation where two psychologists are linked to the legal system by way of a legal decision. You could therefore argue that both deserve to be seen as engaging in forensic psychology. However, there is a crucial difference. The first psychologist actually informed the legal decision based on her psychological knowledge and expertise. The second psychologist's involvement, on the other hand, simply arose as a consequence of a legal decision that she had no direct involvement with. Now, my preferred definition within the what is forensic psychology debate acknowledges this key distinction, namely that branch of applied psychology which is concerned with the collection, examination and presentation of evidence for judicial purposes. Now, if you adopt this definition, the answer to the question what is forensic psychology becomes much more clear because what you're actually stating categorically is that forensic psychology relates to the provision of psychological information for the purpose of facilitating a legal decision. So in the case of our two psychologists, strictly speaking, only the first can said to be engaged in forensic psychology. Now, not everybody would agree with this because there is a school of thought that states that any activity that links psychology to the law deserves to be described as forensic. 
Now, I'm not going to try and convince you which is right. I, I do have uh, my own opinions on the topic. But I think the main thing is if you're interested in forensic psychology, particularly if you're going to study it as a student, you need to know that this debate exists. OK, to summarise then. In answering the question, what is forensic psychology, we have discovered that, in essence, forensic psychology refers to the application of psychology within a legal context. The debate as to what is and what is not forensic psychology relates to the nature of this legal application and the level at which it's applied. And this debate raises a number of questions that you need to think about. In particular, the boundaries of forensic psychology, the role of the forensic psychologist, and the credibility of forensic psychology itself. OK, so that's the end of the first mini-lecture. I, uh, I really hope you found that useful. and At the very least, it's given you something to think about. I'm actually working on the, uh, the second mini-lecture at the moment and uh, hope to be releasing that very soon. But for now, for more information on the wonderful world of uh, forensic psychology, please visit the main website. And don't forget, there are two other websites dedicated to psychology in general and forensic science that you might also want to check out. This is Dave Webb saying many thanks for watching and remember, never stop learning.